Hello there, Stefan and Martin here from Schildwer Potsdam to bring you the ninth part of our series on learning to fight with the single-handed sword, with the side sword to be precise, in the tradition of Giovanni della Gocchia, a 16th, a 16th century fencing master from Bologna. So, today we focus on provocations and by that I don't mean insulting our opponent, but we want to use movements, motions to incite them to attack or attack them ourselves with greater advantage. Because attacking an opponent that is steady, still and in a guard, ready, is really dangerous. Because you run into the danger of their counters. So we use these provocations and the first five we are looking at today are the ones from Coda Longa Estreta, so with the right foot in front and the sword covering your outside. So for me as a right hander that's the right side. The first provocation Giovanni de Lagocchi gives us is a beat towards their sword with the falso dritto. So basically there are two possible, uh, possible interpretations here. Either do you use a downward falso dritto with a false edge to then strike with the tramazzone towards the opponent's head. Okay, so this would be the first, the first uh, provocation. Or another one, especially if the opponent's sword is pointing really low, then maybe it's even this kind of falso dritto where you are coming from underneath like you would defend your leg. In one of the previous video we uh, discussed that technique already. So if the opponent has his hand really low, maybe it's even death. Okay? And the important bit here in these provocations is that this is one where you want to gain a better position, an advantage. While you are gaining that advantage, of course your opponent could strike you, and at certain provocations, Giovanni Dallagocchi even gives you their counters for their attacks once again. So, for example, if I do my falso dritto here and the opponent strikes around, I could then again cover and strike around. It's not really what's in the text right here, but just to give you an example. Okay? So, first one, falso dritto, tramazzone. The next one, is another beat, so another gaining of advantage with a mezzo, uh, uh, mezzo mandrito, so a strike from your from a dominant side, leaving your blade in presence, and then attacking the opponent with a punta reversa. So once again, pretty similar to the previous provocations, just the difference while the falso dritto gets the point more offline, making a strike around a bit more feasible. With the mezzo mandrito, the point is already on the line, so you want to use that with your punta reversa. The next provocation he gives us is a really interesting one, because this is especially to incite the opponent to attack. So it's basically an invitation, if you remember the topics from our last video on the side sword. We take the opponent from Coda Longa Stretta with a mezzo mandrito towards the hand and then withdrawing once again into a Porta di Ferro. So from here we attack towards the hand. If we get that, fine. But if the opponent withdraws their hand, then there's probably an attack of them coming towards, uh, towards our hand. So if you just withdraw, yeah, you need to withdraw further. <laughs> then there's probably an attack towards our other side coming. And from here, we use our false edge, turning into a punta drita. So if we just do this here, they see now the invitation, there comes a blow, and we use that blow to strike our punta drita. So a thrust from our outside, basically going into Giovanni della Gocchia's guarda entrada. Okay? So a totally different kind of provocation where it's more focused on the invitation part, inciting the opponent to attack. The next provocation I want to talk with you is one by 
Punta Riversa, but not on the inside, but on the outside of the opponent's blade. So especially if the opponent has his blade still in Coda Longa, but the point may be a bit more towards my right, making that space more available to me. Then there's a possibility for me to advance here with a Punta Riversa, basically going into Guadi di Faccia, letting the false edge of my blade defend me, which probably will uh, incite my opponent to parry me outside, where I can then strike with the Mandrito Tondo. So once in fluent motion, so opponent's blade is a bit more out there, I strike here and I go on to the other side and then again, of course, cover myself after. Another opportunity, especially if their hands are really high, would be to disengage and thrust underneath. So basically the same original position, but then from here, I thrust an imbrocata, a thrust from above towards their flank, while you should cover yourself, of course, okay? So once again, that influence notion, we're here. There is an opening on the outside, and then I thrust down low here. And of course, then you should cover yourself either by another mezzo mandrito or from the imbrocata, it's usually really a good idea just to go into Guardia di Testa covering your head. Okay, so once more. And then you are out there. Okay, the last one from today you already seen at the beginning and that is overbinding on the inside. So there has to be an opening on the inside for Coda Longa Stretta to work there. I overbind there and I try to go for my Punta Riversa. And now it gets interesting. The footwork is off the line that is to my left, to their right, with the right foot, okay? And once again, if you're already studying the Stressa, this should be really familiar for you, but in Italian did it first. So from here, I place my Forte into the debole, so the strong part of my blade into the weak. I try to thrust that punta reversa, and by stepping into the blade, I get even more of an advantage, okay? Placing myself even better into that debole. If the opponent now disengages, Giovanni Daragocchi calculates for that, so they fall beneath my blade, then of course you should react there as well. Use the tempo, turn around with your Tourette and strike a Punta Dritta yourself. Okay, so let's see that. So I go in here, there's the disengage and I strike my Punta Dritta. True edge is now towards my right side. Okay, let's show it from the other side. Because I like this one so much. So I get in here and here is my, my final thrust concluding that action. Okay, so once again, provocations, either to incite the opponent to strike, so used as an invitation, or to get you into a better position to attack them from. So for example, by gaining the advantage of an overbind, by beating their sword away and all stuff like that. Next week, we are going to look at Porta di Ferro Stretta, basically the sister guard to Cola Longa Estretta, and then you already have a really good cue what you are going to want to do if your opponent fences you with a side sword in these point forward guards. Until then, remember you can really support us by liking this video, sharing and subscribing. You can also support us on Patreon. Until then, take care. Ciao.